All right. Uh, Miss Marshall, you uh. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clear. Go right on. All right. So good afternoon. Good evening. What is it? Afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. And once again, thank you for having me a second time. One day. Um, this afternoon we would be talking about diabetes and. I have an interest in diabetes because um, it is one of the diseases that has been plaguing us, um, especially people of our kind. Um, it is in my family a lot. My mother has it, aunts, uncles, friends, like I know so many people who have diabetes and so and many who have suffered and passed on because of diabetes and its complications. <clears throat> and it is one of the reasons why I took health so serious because I do not want to get it. <laughs> and now I have a son, but at the time I had no children no I had no children so but I did want it to prevent that happening to my future kids. So that's one of the reasons why I take it so seriously. So before I start, let us bow our heads and welcome God's presence. The great and heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. Thank you, dear God, for the blessings, dear Lord, that we have received from you today. As I continue to present, once again, I pray, dear Lord, that you may increase as I decrease. I pray, dear Lord, for everyone that is hearing my voice. I pray that you may grant them an attentive ear. Be with all of us, dear Father, and speak through me as I speak to them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, I'm decoding diabetes. And again, I want to start by reading a disclaimer. This disclaimer says, This information is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please consult with your primary physician for advice. Psalms 103 says, Know he that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and as we ourselves. That's simply saying that if God made us, he is the one, the only one that can tell us what is best for us. What is the best engine to run our bodies? And he has done so by giving us the eight laws of health. Nutrition, we can find information on that in Genesis 129. Exercise, Genesis 215. Water, Genesis 210. Sunlight, Genesis 2.16, temperance, Genesis 2.16 and 17, air, Genesis 1, 6 and 7, rest, Genesis 2.3, and trust in divine, in Genesis 2.17. A prudent man foreseeth the evil, and hide at himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. We get it from Proverbs 22, 3. In simple terms, prevention is better than cure. Hmm. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Question asked. Can we 
die prematurely? I think that is what that that is what we're getting out of that test text. Yes, we can die before our time. According to CDC, Center of Disease Control, diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death within the USA, claiming the lives of over 87,600 people as of 2019. And that's a huge number when you think about it. So now what is diabetes, one may ask. It is a chronic, long-lasting health condition that affects how your body turns food into sugar. I'm sorry. The term diabetes is the shortened version of the full name diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is derived from the Greek word diabetes, meaning siphon, which is the pass through, and the Latin word mellitus, meaning honeyed or sweet. This is because in diabetes, excess sugar is found in blood as well as in the urine. There are two types of diabetes, mainly. You have the type 1 diabetes, which is a juvenile, which is also called a juvenile diabetes, and it is mostly found in children. Persons suffering from type 1 or juvenile diabetes are dependent on insulin. Type 2 diabetes or adult onset is a non-insulin dependent. In other words, this is a lifestyle conditions, condition. The things that we do day to day over time is what is contributed and of course this to have this disease. What are some of the symptoms of diabetes? Excess thirst, frequent urination, and that's because the body is using, uses water to flush the sugar out of the kidneys. The body is also trying to eliminate the excess sugar that did not go into the cells. Fatigue. The cells are starved due to lack of glucose and weight loss. People get weight loss because the body burns fats and muscles for energy due to lack of glucose. And one that is not listed there is erectile dysfunction. Of course, that's in the men. That is because the there is damaged nerves and blood vessels. And of course, there are other symptoms of diabetes, but those are the main ones. What is the cause of diabetes? What is the cause of diabetes? You want to look at carbohydrates. See, look, our cereals and breads. Those are the things that we eat that are popular and easy to grab. And those are the things we find that most people eat in the morning. 
And because sometimes the cereal and the bread doesn't take us very far in the day, we find around 10, 11 snacking on cake or biscuit or a pie or something. Pizza, pasta, rice, potato, and of course sugar. Aren't these most of what people eat every single day? Some people eat it carbs, high carbs in the morning, high carbs at lunch, and even high carbs in dinner. Never in history has man eaten so much carbohydrates. And if we check statistics, we'll find that diabetes is much more prevalent today than it were back in the 40s, 50s. So uh, basically everything that we eat breaks down to glucose in the GI tract and then gets into the blood. The liver distribute, does the distribution of the glucose. The first place that the liver actually tries to send the glucose is in the cells. Now, the glucose in the blood when there's glucose in our blood, the pancreas releases insulin. The insulin, like the key to the cells, to the walls of the cells, allows, helps the glucose into the cells. The cells then go through a 10-step pathway called the glycolytic pathway. At the end of this, this 10 steps, only two units of energy is released. And that's due to fermentation because there is actually no oxygen present during this step. At this step, this time the chemical form of glucose is called pyruvate. Pyruvate then goes through another eight step pathway, releasing 35 units of energy. So now what's the difference between the first 10 steps and the last eight steps. Oxygen is the difference. In the first 10 steps, there was no oxygen. And so we were able to get that two units of energy only through fermentation, the process of fermentation. But now that oxygen is present, we're able to get 35 units of energy in the last eight steps. Now you can understand what happens when the cell doesn't get energy, when we, sorry, when the cell doesn't have energy. That is, a norm, that is what happens normally when the glucose is in the blood and then the glucose gets into the cells. So if there is more um, glucose left over, the liver then stores the remaining glucose in the muscles as glycogen. And glycogen is just like grape-like molecules that we pluck when we need them, that is plucked when we need them. So for instance, in the morning you have breakfast like a king, well, we're supposed to have breakfast like a king, have a five-hour break in between, lunch like a dinner, Lunch like a queen and dinner like a pauper, sorry. Or, for some of us, we fast. We only have two meals, breakfast and lunch, and then we fast until the next morning. Now, if you get up the next morning after having fast throughout the night and go for a run, what are you using as energy, as a source of energy to, 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 to run? That's, what, that's when we use up our glycogen. 
So sometimes even after this, we still have, because the person might have been on a high carbohydrate diet, there is still more glucose to be stored. And then liver just stores it in our fat cells. And there is the connection between diabetes and obesity. Pancreas. The pancreas lives under the left rib and it controls your blood glucose levels. When your pancreas is not working well, a person can be diagnosed with a condition called diabetes. The pancreas releases two main hormones. One, the insulin. Insulin is rele released to get the sugar level down by helping glucose out of the blood and into the cells. Then into the muscle cells is glucogen, and then if there is still more glucose, it then stores it as fat. Glucagon, on the other hand, if for whatever reasons we um, the sugar or sugar levels get really low, and that can happen when a diabetic maybe is taking too much insulin, or the person might have fasted for a long time and the sugar run down really low, the glucagon, the pancreas then releases glucagon to help to bring that, bring the sugar levels up. And so our bodies were designed that way to keep our blood sugar at a, at a level that it is supposed to be. So what happens when we eat high carb diet? Because of excess sugar in the blood, over time, something goes wrong and the cells start to resist insulin, developing insulin resistance. And because there is excess glucose in the blood, the brain sends a message to the pancreas to release more insulin. And over time, pancreas become overworked and the person becomes pre-diabetes, pre-diabetic, and if person doesn't make any changes to their lifestyle, then that person becomes full-blown diabetic. We're continuing with the cause. We find sugar. helps to spike the blood sugar really quickly. And when you heat, when we heat refined sugar, we have a quick rise and a corresponding low. So the blood sugar spikes up quickly and then it gets low just as quickly. And that's one of the reasons why you would find um, persons would become hungry you know, they're not able to sustain, to be sustained within the four or five hours. You just eat some, eat something, and then within the next hour or two, there is this hunger. Arbidized wheat. What about the wheat? We've been told over and over, diabetics have been told to eat all wheat. But the wheat that we are using nowadays is not the same wheat that we've been using that were back in the day. And the wheat has been hybridized. And because of that process, the starches have been changed to amylase pectin A, which gives it a quick rise and a corresponding low. So that's one um that's one of the issues and one of the controversy nowadays with the wheat and diabetics. It's not that wheat is bad, it's just that the because the wheat has been the wheat that we have now is hybrid and the starch has been changed, 
it has become bad for us. And so it is best if we stay away from the wheat as much as possible. But then you might ask, what else can you eat if not the wheat? There are some, there is another you call spout. Now spout is a it's hybrid, but it was naturally hybridized. I call it the cousin wheat cousin, and spout is a much better grain to use instead of the the old wheat that we have nowadays. Dairy dairy increases children's risk of type one diabetes by. 60% a study has shown. Now, dairy milk is very good for baby calves, but it is not so good for us. Cows have four stomachs and we creatures have one. Caffeine causes the pancreas to release glucagon, leading to a high and then a corresponding low. Margarine is an altered fat. It blocks the receptors in the cells. It is also toxic and is one molecule structure away from plastic. Like someone said, if you're going to eat margarine, you might as well just continue with the, plastic, with the container as well. And of course, the lack of exercise does contribute. And we'll find out, find out why later. What are the risk factors in diabetes? Heredity. Mother, father has it, then you are predisposed to it. But know that it doesn't, not because your parents might have diabetes, you have to get it. Heredity leads the gun, but it is our lifestyle that actually pulls the trigger. Diet, obesity, lack of exercise, all are risk factors for diabetes. And the older you get, the higher the risk for diabetes. And here we have a little diagram that shows, this shows how sugar affects us from our head to our legs. All are affected from this disease called diabetes. Diabetes increases the risk of other diseases. It does increase the risk for heart disease, kidney failure, eye disease. It is actually it is the leading cause of blindness. It increases the risk of peripheral neuropathy and that's because the body takes water from the point farthest from the heart and the minerals in the feet are carried away by the water because of the constant, the steady urination. And this leads to damage to the feet. Persons with diabetics are more likely to get things, to get um, infections and ulcers um, because the ulcers most times, sometimes do not heal, over time that will contribute towards the person's feet being amputated. So what are some of the afflictions of diabetes? Diabetes, again, is the number one cause of blindness in adults. It shortens the lifespan from 5 to 10 years, it's 2 to 12 times the risk for heart attack, two to four times the risk for stroke. Over 50,000 diabetics are either on dialysis or have had a kidney transplant due to diabetic neuropathy 
yearly. Leviticus 17.11 tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And therefore, if we want a healthy body, we therefore have to feed the blood healthy food. And we can do that from a cellular level. We feed ourselves healthily. The cells then goes on to make our tissues, tissues of organs, then the system, like our digestive system, and, and then our body. So when we look in, when we are looking at finding the cause and cure, finding the cure, we should be looking to start from a cellular level feeds the cell healthily, then ultimately our entire body would be healthy as well. And so what are five needs of the cell? Oxygen. Within minutes, cells start dying if you don't get it. Water. Without it, several days, cells start to die. Nutrients. Without it, it dies in several weeks. We need to eliminate waste from the things that we take in. And if all these wastes are built up, within hours the cells start to die. And also freedom from toxins, because toxin causes our cells to die prematurely. And so how do we turn things around? How do we turn off the faucet. Refine the sugar. We need to stop the things that have contributed to this illness in the first place. We learn about the refined sugar earlier and how it affects us. The refined sugar gives a, a, a quick rise in blood sugar, but it also then gives us a corresponding low. We want to replace the sugar with stevia. Um, you can even like stew up like a Granny Smith apple because the Granny Smith as a apple has a very low GI, glycemic index. Wheat. Because of the amyloid pectin A, Wheat has a high G, um, glycemic index, so we want to replace the wheat with spelt, or you can, or oats, or millet, or you know, some other grain that has a low GI index. Dairy, again, dairy is for. Cows, it's for the animals, it's not for us. So we have to stop with the dairy, stop with the caffeine, stop with the margarine. What are some of the things we can do? Can eat more vegetables, lots of vegetables, spinach, pumpkins, and so forth. Eat more fresh fruits, food, foods that are low have low GI. A low, GI, a low GI glycemic index of 55 and under. All of your berries have a low GI. So you can eat lots of berries. Replace wheat with spelt, rye, or organic oats. Exercise. Exercise is so very important. And in the case of diabetics, um, when you do the high intensity interval training, 
It helps to burn stored fats. It releases the growth hormone H GH. It gets the blood to the skin and helps the body to utilize protein more better. It also helps the body to develop extra insulin receptors. And if the body, if the cells are generating new, uh, new insulin receptors over time, the body would stop resisting the glucose. Drink at least eight glasses of water daily. And please be reminded that in order to get the waters inside of the cell, we want to utilize one grain of crystal, one grain of Celtic salt before every glass of water. And just instead of drinking out like one old bottle of water, you can just sip the water throughout. Also, I want to mention that our meals should be, when you're planning a meal, you want your meals to be high protein, high in healthy fats, and your healthy fats would be your coconut oils, your olive oils, nuts and seed. When you buy an olive oil, you want to buy the extra virgin, cold press extra virgin olive oil. It is advisable not to heat your olive oil so you don't cook with the olive oil. Unless, you know, when you finish cooking the food, then you can put the olive oil inside, but Olive oil is not supposed to touch it, heat because it damages the chemical structure. But you can use the coconut oil to cook with. You can also get healthy fats from your nuts and seeds as well. Avocado is really healthy for diabetics as well and food also should be high fiber and you get fiber from all of your vegetables and your plant-based foods. So your meals should be high protein, high healthy fats, and high fibers. It's also important to know that um, the membranes in our cells is 50% fat, but 70% fat in the brain. Our brain membrane is also 50% protein. So that's the reason why we advise to eat high protein, high fat, and of course, fiber. Helps us to keep us throughout the day. Once we eat a, a diet that is high in fiber, high in fat, high in protein, then the sugar will rise steadily but then it will keep you throughout the, the four to five hours that you're supposed to be fasting to allow the stomach to digest the food, and then it gives you a nice steady low. So after that four or five hours, you'll find that you now start feeling hungry. And that's what that's. That's lunchtime. That's time to eat. But if you eat food that lack fiber, lack fat, so, or unhealthy fats, high in carbohydrates, possibly the wrong type of protein, what do we find? You eat, the sugar rises quickly, and within the next hour or two, you find yourself hungry and then you're snacking on something. You don't want to be snacking in between meals. You want, when we eat in the morning, give ourselves four or five hours. We have lunch, give ourselves four or five hours. And if we do dinner, then 
you have something light and soup it is better to have like an, a soup in the evening or a smoothie something light not too heavy because when you you want your food to digest quickly in the evening that's one and when you're going to bed at night your stomach should be empty so that when you're sleeping and you're resting your stomach your organs are also resting as well and so if we follow the eight laws of health nutrition again diet high in fiber fats and protein exercise 50 minutes of high intensity interval training is good enough that takes you throughout the day and one thing to remember too with the high intensity training upon the second set set you start accessing the fats that is stored in the glycogen so that would help you to lose lose that fat the body uses that fat as energy as fuel and so for persons who might be you know obese that's one of the a good habit to introduce in your day, daily schedule high intensity exercise you want to run for let's say 20 30 minutes you run as hard as you can and you rest for as long as you need to pretty much maybe about a minute or so and then you go again for as hard and as fast as you can and then you rest and you keep doing that for about six to seven sets and that'll be fine you can do that running or you can even do that cycling you, you cycle for as, as hard as you can and then you allow yourself to rest and then you cycle for as hard as you can and you know you continue with that for like 15 to 20 minutes water we need about let's say about eight glasses of water every day remember we're using a Celtic salt to allow because the the magnesium in the Celtic salt is what draws the water into the cell sunshine or vitamin D is really really good for us temperance we want to eat that which is healthy but we don't want to overdo it so we eat what is good we abstain from that which is bad but at the same time we try not to overeat because when we overeat we are putting the stomach on the extra burden here fresh air if we allow fresh air let's go out every day 15 20 half an hour whatever time we, we we have and get some fresh air outside open the windows allow the fresh air to pass in when you're sleeping at night make sure to crack the windows a little so that some fresh air can come in and the rest good quality rest want to go to bed like by 9 9 30 at night 10 o'clock should meet us sleeping and the most important hours is from 10 to 2 3 in the morning and maybe if you want to wake up a little early you wake up you can wake up around 3 4 5 that's up to you but the most important hours are between 10 and 3 in the morning and after we've done everything we possibly can according to our knowledge we trust in God we trust in the power above we pray we ask God 
to help these things to work for us. And God is merciful. He is gracious. As long as we do our part, He is faithful to do His part. And as long as we follow the eight laws of health, of a diet, high in fiber, healthy fats, proteins, exercise, cut back on the carbs, legumes, I forgot to mention that legumes have a low GI. For diabetics, it is advised you to use legumes every single day. Include legumes in your meal. Eat legumes. So you want to be looking at a meal such as legumes. Make sure to have your legumes and your vegetables inside. And if you do that, within a short space of time, within a month, two months, three months, you should be seeing results. And by God's grace, if you're on medication, be able to come off it over time. Of course, under your doctor's supervision. And that has brought me to the end of my presentation on diabetes. Thank you all so much for your time. Um, I don't know if there is any question that anyone might have at this time. Okay. Open up for some questions. Anyone has questions? I have, I have a question. And my question is about cooking oils. There are so many out there starting with different qualities of olive oil. You have light, medium, virgin, extra virgin. Then you have avocado oil. You have grapeseed oil. You have canola oil. You have sunflower oil. And then you have the other regular ones that we've had vegetable oil, corn oil. How does one go through the maze of oils to see which oil is best for doing different things, starting with cooking? So the cooking, the coconut oil, sorry, is good for cooking, that I'm certain of. You can cook with... Um, coconut oil if you're like sauteing and things and stuff. The olive oil, I do not heat olive oil at all. I use it on the, if I'm ever going to use it, I use it raw. You know, you can pour it on your, your um, salads. You can mix it with some, maybe some grind herbs, culinary herbs that is and some lemon juice, then you make like a salad dressing with it. Or maybe when you finish cooking the food, then you can pour the olive oil on it. But I do not heat, put the olive oil on heat at all. Okay. The other oil that I use is, um, I use the avocado oil and the grapeseed oil because I've learned that those two oils have a high heating point. So if I want to fry anything, Let's say I want to fry plantains. I would fry it with the grapeseed oil. But um, for me personally, what I tried as much as possible to do is not fry things. I rarely fry anything. And that allows me to cut back on the amount of oils that I use. But when for my regular cooking, I use, I would either use the coconut oil, Grape seed oil or the avocado oil. Vegetable oils, you want to stay away from vegetable oil as much as you can. Do not use vegetable oil. Um, something else, another oil you had mentioned. Oh, the canola oil. 
canola is not an actual food. You have, let's say, the coconut oil, you get the coconut oil from the flesh of the coconut. You get the olive oil from the flesh of the olive. We don't have a canola as a food or vegetable. Hmm. So it's actually a GMO oil. And we, not, we don't want to be consuming anything that is GMO. So yeah. I will stay away from canola oil as much as possible. Perfect. Um, the the um, those two oil that you mentioned, the avocado and the grapeseed. Yeah, I just discovered that when I'm putting a presentation on, I'm going shopping <laughs> next health series next year sometime. Um, uh, Doctor Sabi was the one that mentioned that the olive oil the the avocado oil and the grapeseed oil can handle high high heat, but the the olive oil when you when you heat it up when you fry it because of oh, I'm hearing a lot of static there. Hold on. Right, it strips the nutrition nutritional value from the olive oil when we use it as cooking oil, and. Um, that's something we want to stay away from because if it has no value and we put it in the body, then what is the body getting from it? Nothing. Okay. Right. I, I was muted, I'm sorry, because I had oh. another concern about oil. We okay. find that we have to look at people's means and avocado, avocado oil is very expensive. Also, um, grapeseed oil, and in many local grocery stores, you don't find them. Actually, Ms. Barnes, they are, you know. Even, well, even I, no, if, Pastor, I am talking about when I go shopping and what I look for, what I look at, and I don't find them. And when you find it in the very local stores, they are out of the prices, out of the reach of regular people. So I'm asking, what is, um, I never cook, fry, or do anything with olive oil, period. I just use it in my salad. But um, what can the regular person use who is really striving um, to be healthy? Do you have access? Do you get um, coconut oil in your local store? Yeah, yes, yes. I'm not talking about myself. I'm shopping for regular people. When I say regular people, not that I'm not a regular person, but there are some people who are on, on limited budget and stuff, and it's very hard for them to purchase certain things that they really want to use. I think that the, the coconut oil, you would find it in almost every grocery store. And coconut oil, well, to me, it's not that it's, it's cost, cost, cost effective. And um, as you speak about coconut oil, I find that it has a real low um, heating index point. But my question is not to, um, it's just to see the, per the regular person who is on a fixed income and really want to eat properly. What's the next thing other than the avocado oil and the grapeseed oil? there for them. I find coconut oil has a low... Um, to settle the question, Google oils that have high heat resistance and make sure that the oil is not refined because that's the one you want to stay away from. Um, right. Why I'm asking on this platform is that there are other people on there. I would be the one going to Google and who do I pass the information to. So I'm asking on this platform for the other people. <laughs> All right, thank you. Everyone that's listening, if you want to know what's the best oil to um, to deal with the cooking that can handle high heat, before you buy the oil in the supermarket, take out your phone or right now on your phone, Google oils that can handle high heat. You will see the avocado oil, you will see the grapeseed oil, you, they will rank it for you. Google top five oils that can handle heat resistance. 
and they will list it for you. Now, the grapeseed oil uh, is about $11. In fact, most of the vir extra virgin olive oil that people buy is more expensive than the grapeseed oil. Right? So the, the point is, is that people are, are buying the olive oil and the other oil because they didn't have the knowledge. It's not that it's that much of a bigger difference in price. Right? Even the, the local supermarkets right there on, on, on Gun Hill, um, right there on Allerton, they all have the avocado oil and the, um, and the, the grapeseed oil in the supermarket. Right? It's just that people don't know. Right? And when you look at the prices there, the extra virgin olive oil, some of them can go up to $27. The grapeseed oil is only $9.99, $11.99. So it's just a matter of not of knowing that will make the difference in some in most cases. And also the danger for the olive oil is not only the nutrients, but once it's heated it gives off free radical. Mm. So it can cancer cause in so it should never be heated. Right, I didn't know that. Excellent. Thank you. Also, look at the oils, right? And make sure that they're not refined. Because one thing that I notice, even with the avocado oils, um, there's some of them that are um, um, expeller pressed or cold pressed. That's the one that you want. You don't want the one that's refined. And it's the same price. It's just a matter of knowing. Um, you want the oil that is hexamy free as well. right? Hexamy is the process by how they expel the oil. Right? Hexamy free means that the chemicals are not used in extraction. So the oil comes in its natural purest form. But if it's not hexamy free, there's a, there, the, the, the process by which they expel the oil, there are chemicals in the oil. And we don't want that. All right. Any other questions? If you want to have any other questions, maybe you had a question from this morning that you want to ask, ask real quick before we go. I think is that everyone um, everyone has uh, understood well. And uh, Pastor, there's a, um, there's a question in the chat. I'm, oh, I didn't I'm see the oh, I'm sorry. Think shea butter would be okay for cooking? Hmm. I don't know. I've never heard of that um, being used. Uh, never, I haven't done any research on it. Um, Mrs. Marshall, do you have you heard of anything regarding shea butter as a means of cooking? Um, no, I have never heard of using shea butter to cook. Never. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a new one for me. It comes from shea nut. All right, I don't know. I mean, right. I use the, the the shea butter to make like lotion, um, creams and stuff like that, but never for cooking. I'm going to have to look into that one. Yeah, that's one I have to look into as well. Um, yeah. All right. All right. Um, according to Google, it is edible. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to do a little more research on that one, even though Google says it, you know, shea butter is edible. Um I will feel a bit weird um, putting eating shea butter. <laughs> oh, no. We'll have to look into that one. But I would pass on that one as well. Yeah. Um, again, the oil is the major thing. I think it's the little things that make big difference. When you're looking for the oil, make sure that it's not refined. 
you heard about the canola and the stay away completely from the vegetable oil. The canola is GMO and um, uh, do the best that we can for the circumstances and God's grace will supply the rest. Now next Sabbath, we're gonna, next Sabbath is all about women's health. Ladies, I think you want to be there with Lifestyle Coach. Um, Miss um, Galuptin, she's an educator and a lifestyle coach who's going to deal with women's health next week and women's uh, hormones and anything that relates to a woman. Uh, ladies, I assure you want to be there tomorrow afternoon at 6 to 7. We're going to continue with faith. Now, that's a timely word for this season, what we're going through right now as we continue um, part nine in the series on faith. By God's grace, I hope that you will be there. You will invite someone and we will um, um, go forward. God bless you. Let us um, um, I'll close with a quick word of prayer. And once again, um, Mrs. Marshall, we want to thank you at Throg's Neck and for all our family. Um, near and far for being such a blessing to us and we know that all of us were truly blessed and we look forward to um, using your wisdom and allowing God to you to bless us and equip us to be better servants right so that we can grow both in grace in knowledge and prosper in health which is God's desire for us all right, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you this afternoon, God, for allowing your daughter to be such a blessing to all of us. Lord, we recognize that um, uh, our body is the temple and it's wisdom that we need to navigate the jungle of life. Now that we have gotten uh, a little wiser in regards to uh, food and diet and causes of diseases may you bring all things back to our remembrance when we are faced with the temptation to put in our bodies that which will not contribute to good health to feed the cells bless us to this end and may you continue to strengthen each and every one of us on this line we look forward to what you are doing in us God and what you will do through us bring everyone back tomorrow for this series on faith because without faith, it is impossible to please you. May you bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank anytime. You yes. On behalf of all of us here, once again, we thank you so much. May the Lord continue to bless your ministry. All right. God bless everyone. See you tomorrow at 6. Bye-bye.